William Marshall was born in 1147 in Wiltshire. At the age of five, he was in the custody of King Stephen. Although his son was a hostage of the king, this did not stop William's father, a man called John, being a problem for the English crown. His behaviour could very well have led to the execution of his young son. Stephen, however, was not as hard-hearted a man as other kings of his age and later times might have been. One day, the young William saw a soldier with a spear. Intrigued, William asked if he could play with it. Stephen was quite touched by seeing this and the boy's innocence, and so decided to keep young William at his court. From there on in, William grew up to be a stalwart of the crown during turbulent times and remained loyal to the English monarchy throughout the rest of his life. Such was William Marshall's prowess as a warrior. It is said that he was the only man to ever be feared by Richard the Lionheart. During one of Richard's rebellions against his father, Henry II, William came face to face with Richard, where he unseated him from his horse. In fear for his life, Richard pleaded with Marshall to spare him. William would not kill Richard, as after all, Richard was still a prince and the son of a king. But to send him a clear message, he instead killed Richard's horse. Marshall was the epitome of chivalry, and this encounter would have left a huge and significant mark on Richard and his ideas of chivalry, and would define the king that he would become. Further problems for the English crown arose with the succession to the throne of Richard I's utterly hopeless brother, King John. Whilst his father and brother had been formidable characters in their own right, John was anything but. Utterly treacherous towards his brother during his reign, he had shown no scruples conspiring with the French king to keep Richard in captivity after he had been captured on the way back from Crusade. It was that same French king, Philip II, who had totally outwitted John and seized back the lands that Henry II had claimed through his marriage to Eleanor of Aquitaine. It wasn't long before the English nobles completely despaired of their hopeless king and William Marshall was called upon to save the English crown. The King John had resorted to increasingly desperate measures in order to regain his French lands. Magna Carta was eventually thrust upon him with William Marshall at the forefront of proceedings. It is not hard to see how it got to this point for King John. He had got on the wrong side of almost every noble in England, alienating almost every powerful man in the country. He had also got on the wrong side of the church and also the Pope, although relations with Innocent III eventually improved over time. John died in 1216, a year after Magna Carta, and there were two big problems. John's heir was a nine-year-old boy, now Henry III. History shows child monarchs are hugely problematic, and there was also the matter of Prince Louis, the son of Philip II of France, who had been invited by the nobles to claim the English crown in the place of King John. Although there was a new king in place, Louis continued his attempts to become King of England, and it was up to William Marshall, now in his 70s, to defeat him at the Battle of Lincoln in 1217. Prince Louis would have to make do with becoming King of France in 1223, although he only reigned for three years. William Marshall was regent to the young King Henry III 
up until his death in 1219. He had been nearly executed as a small child, seen open rebellion against the kings he now served, seen off a foreign invasion, and been one of the key figures behind Magna Carta. His career and legacy is quite extraordinary. Without him, the course of English history would have and could have been completely different. 